Welcome back everyone. Ready to dive into another complex topic. Today we're tackling two serious diabetic complications, DKA and HHS. Diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. Right. Now we're going to unpack those acronyms, explore the similarities, the differences, uh, you know, really give you the tools to recognize and treat these conditions effectively. Yeah. yeah. Because let's be honest, the stakes are high. Absolutely. Both DKA and HHS can be life-threatening. But proper management. Yeah. Survival is possible. A hundred percent. Okay. So let's start with the common ground. Both DKA and HHS, they both come from insulin deficiency. Right. Leading to hyperglycemia. Exactly. And common triggers. Yeah. You know, things like infection, medication, noncompliance, they can set off either condition. And that's why early recognition is so important. For sure. And when it comes to initial treatment, what's the key? Fluid resuscitation and insulin therapy. That's crucial for both DKA and HHS. All right, so let's get into the specifics. Let's start with DKA. Typically, we're talking type 1 diabetes here. Right. And without insulin, the body, it needs energy. So what does it do? It turns to fat. And that's where the ketones come in. Yep, those ketones build up. And what does that lead to? Metabolic acidosis, hence the name, diabetic. Ketoacidosis? Now, DKA is usually pretty rapid onset, right? Yeah, we're talking within 24 hours often. You'll see blood glucose levels above 250 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, what else should we be looking for? Low blood pH, so less than 7.3. Low bicarbonate, less than 18 millimoles per liter. High ketones in both blood and urine. And an elevated anion gap. So lab values are important, but what about clinically? What are those hallmark signs of DKA? Well, you'll see the classic symptoms, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Right. And of course, that telltale sign, fruity breath. Right. From the ketones. Can't forget about small respiration. Oh, definitely. Those deep labored breaths. That's the body trying to compensate for the acidosis. So DKA, pretty dramatic presentation. Now let's contrast that with HHS, usually seen in type 2. Yeah. Right? Often. In HHS, there is some insulin present, but the body cells can't really use it mm. effectively. Insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Sky high blood sugar. I mean, we're talking 600 milligrams per deciliter or even higher sometimes. Wow, that's a lot higher than what we typically see with DKA. Yeah, it's a key distinction. Now, what's interesting is despite that really severe hyperglycemia, there's no significant ketosis. Oh, that's a big difference. So no acidosis in HHS. Nope. pH and bicarbonate levels stay normal. Mm. So if it's not acidosis, what's the main issue in HHS? It all boils down to hyperosmolality. So you have that high sugar concentration and that pulls water out of the cells. Leading to? Severe dehydration. So we've got DKA, rapid onset, yeah. acidosis, and HHS, this kind of insidious dehydration. I imagine that impacts how they present. Absolutely. With HHS, you'll often see neurological symptoms, things like confusion, drowsiness, could even progress to seizures or coma. That's because the brain is particularly vulnerable to dehydration. So really different clinical pictures. Mm. DKA, more of those gastrointestinal and respiratory symptoms. HHS. You got to be on the lookout for those neurological signs. They can be subtle, especially early on. Okay, so we're starting to see how tricky HHS can be. Which brings us to something pretty interesting. You know, you might think DKA with its rapid onset and those dramatic symptoms would be the one with the higher mortality rate. Surprising, isn't it? It is. But HHS, um, despite that slower onset and the less obvious symptoms, it actually has a higher mortality rate. Right, sometimes as high as 20%. Wow, compared to- Up to 8% for DKA. Yeah, so why, why do you think that is? Well, it probably comes down to a few things. HHS often affects older individuals right. who might already have other health conditions. Right. So that makes them more vulnerable to complications. Makes sense. Plus those early signs of HHS, they can be easily missed. You know, people might brush them off as something else. Oh yeah, or just attribute them to something else entirely. Exactly. And that leads to delays in diagnosis and treatment. And by the time HHS is really recognized, it can be a lot harder to manage. So that's why we need to be extra vigilant with HHS. I hate. Especially in older adults with type 2 diabetes. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about management. Yeah. What are those essential first steps for healthcare providers when they're dealing with DKA or HHS? Well, you have to assess the situation quickly. Is it DKA? Is it HHS? Because even though the initial steps are similar. There are some important differences. Okay, so we're thinking, is there acidosis? What's the blood glucose level? Are we seeing ketones in the urine? Exactly. You need all those puzzle pieces to make the right call. To get the full picture. Right. And once you've got the diagnosis, right. aggressive fluid resuscitation. That's key for both DKA and HHS. Both of them. we got to restore that intravascular volume, ASAP. Right. 
and improve perfusion as quickly as possible. And we're talking 1,000 to 1,500 milliliters of 0.9% saline. In that first hour. Right in that first hour. Then we start IV insulin therapy right away to bring that blood sugar down. Yep. But we got to be careful here. Watch out for hypoglycemia as that blood glucose starts to drop. Right. Because it can happen fast. It can. So frequent blood glucose checks are essential. And be ready to adjust that insulin infusion rate. It's a balancing act for sure. It is. You want to control the glucose, but you don't want to overshoot and cause harm. And speaking of careful monitoring, we can't forget about potassium. Oh, potassium. Potassium can really make or break things in DKA and HHS. So no room for error there. Nope. You have yeah. to monitor those serum potassium levels and correct any abnormalities right away. So how do we approach that? Well, it depends on the patient's initial potassium level. If it's low, we hold the insulin and give potassium supplements. If the levels are normal, we add potassium to the IV fluids. And if it's high, we hold off on the potassium and just monitor very closely. So it's all about personalized care. Exactly. But even while we're focusing on these immediate steps, yeah. you know, managing the crisis, we can't lose sight of the bigger picture. Right. DK and HHS, they're usually triggered by something else. Exactly. Infections, medication problems, other health conditions. It's like detective work. We got to find the root cause, not just put out the fire. Exactly. And by addressing those underlying causes, we can help prevent future episodes of DKA or HHS. And improve long-term outcomes for our patients. Right. It's about prevention as much as it is about treatment. It's really about shifting our mindset, isn't it? Yes. Moving beyond just reacting to these acute situations. Exactly. We need to be more proactive, more preventative when it comes to diabetes management. And that means thinking bigger than just the individual patient. Right. Right. System level changes are crucial. What do you mean by that? Well, we need to make sure everyone has access to affordable diabetes care, develop education programs that are culturally sensitive, and address those health disparities that hit some communities harder than others. You know, diabetes doesn't affect everyone equally. So it's about making sure everyone has a fair shot at good health. Exactly. And of course, research is a big piece of this puzzle. Right. We need to keep investing in research, mm -hmm. new treatments, better prevention strategies, new technologies. And we're already seeing some amazing advancements, continuous glucose monitoring insulin pumps, even those closed loop systems that automatically adjust insulin based on your glucose levels. It's like science fiction coming to life. It is, and it gives me a lot of hope for the future of diabetes care. Me too. And you know, speaking of hope, I think it's important to remember that diabetes, it's serious. Yeah. But it's not a life sentence. Right, with the right management, the right education, and the right support. People with diabetes can live long, healthy lives. That's a great message to end on. So that wraps up our deep dive into DKA and HHS. Remember, knowledge is power. And when we work together, we can really make a difference in the lives of people with diabetes. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.